This episode has been brought to you by Flowstate, the unlimited Webflow development service. Find out more at flowstate.dev. Hello and welcome. My name is Samuel Gregory and I'm the owner and founder of Jupyter and the Draft and the Flowstate service. In this series, I'm answering a bunch of questions that we frequently get asked with regards to Webflow from the likes of CEOs and more less technical roles such as marketing teams. So in this specific episode, we're going to discuss the differences between Webflow and WordPress, which if you've been in the industry long enough, you'll for sure have heard of WordPress. So without further ado, let's get into it. Oh, and just before we kick off, if you do have any questions, do let me know in the comments or email me at jupiterdraft.com and I will be sure to try and create more of these FAQ type of videos in the future. So I'm gonna break this episode up into a few parts. We're gonna look at the two tools and briefly overview of how they're different. If you wanna dig deeper into Webflow specifically, I do have another video on that, which I'll link to below and up in the card. But we're just gonna briefly look at the two different tools and what makes them so different. We're also gonna look at the resourcing that you need if you're hiring someone to actually build either of these websites. We're also gonna look at the pricing differences as well as the business use cases for either of these platforms. So let's briefly talk about what the different tools are and how they're, how they're different. Webflow is a relatively new platform. It launched in 2012 uh, at Y Combinator and has really seen significant exposure in the last five years. And what it brought is a, a designer where someone can go in and create their website to the exact specifications that they want, uh, the exact design that they want, and then publish that website all in the one platform. And that was a real game changer, not only because it was a SaaS platform where, again, the, the hosting of the website was taken care of, the CMS of the website was taken care of, and the actual designing of the website was taken care of, but also it enabled the designer to be very specific about the theme or design of the website that they're creating. It's a UI interface that essentially writes the code to create the website. WordPress, on the other hand, is very much modularized, modularized uh, approach to creating a website. You can do it in two flavors. Uh, you go to wordpress.com and you have a similar kind of approach to Webflow with one big difference, which we'll talk about later on. Or you can download WordPress, create your theme, and then upload it and host it where you choose to host it. And it really revolves around theming. And you can either download or buy a theme that's pre-made that gives you the framework in which you can work in. So already you can start to see the biggest differences here in the, not only from a technical technological aspect, WordPress is very much like do it yourself and sort of bring your own hosting and, and CMS and all the rest of it versus Webflow where it's an all-in-one package. But really Webflow within the website itself manipulate and change the, the design of the website exactly as you want it. Whereas the WordPress side of things, you are, you are limited, whether it's been developed by a developer that you've hired or whether you've d d downloaded a theme itself, that is the website design that you're stuck with unless you start dipping into the code. So very much more rigid. Now, I said I didn't want to get too technical in this series, but we can't not raise the issue of basically what the pros and cons are of these two different platforms. So Webflow, you're very much stuck with what they give you. Webflow have decided what features you can have, what integrations you can have, how it links off to other services that you, that you might use. It's very much, they've created a solution to build what I say is 90% of websites, and I'll go into that um, that use case a little bit later on in the episode. Whereas WordPress, although there is a lot of rigidity to once it's built, it's kind of built, the, the what you can do because you have access to the code, which is something you don't have with Webflow, you can do so much more with that website. You can build any sort of integration or any feature that you could possibly imagine because you're working with the raw code, where once again, Webflow, you don't have that opportunity. It's also worth noting that if Webflow go down, then your website goes down, or if Webflow introduce a bug, or there's the builder becomes slow and sluggish, and unless they fix this stuff, your hands are completely tied. So let's talk about resourcing. Obviously, you need to design that website itself. So you'd need a designer, you'd need a UX person to bring on board to, to decide what the look and feel of the website is. 
This is where the biggest difference comes into play because you then need to turn that design into code, into a website. And because you, with a Webflow website, you don't need to know how to code, that designer is fully empowered to take their designs and build it inside of Webflow. In some instances, they might not even design it in a third-party application. They might go right ahead and develop directly inside of Webflow. Uh, again, because they just don't have to write any code and they know exactly how they want things to look. Whereas WordPress, you have to have a developer because you need to write PHP code to develop the, the WordPress theme for then you to be able to you know, add the, the content in later on. So this is where you really can, you can see how you can save a lot of resourcing just by going with a Webflow designer. Whereas, yeah, you, you absolutely need a developer and a designer to, to build your WordPress website, or at least that is the stages. Once again, you could get a designer that can also develop, um, but for sure, there will be a coding phase in the delivery of the project. There'll be design and a coding phase. So just that's the kind of thing you need to bear in mind. And of course, because Webflow is taken care of with hosting and, and all the technical infrastructure around actually getting that website live, with the WordPress side of things, you need someone, again, whether it's the same person, you need and someone to define the infrastructure. You need to buy the hosting plan of say GoDaddy or something like that, but they need to actually get it online. And a lot of these hosting plans, again, my personal favorite is Hostinger, which I'll leave links to down below. Um, I strongly recommend Hostinger because you can sign up for their WordPress plan, one click, and you've got WordPress installed and ready to go. So it's almost like a SaaS solution of Webflow. So, but once again, once the theme has been developed, you're still restricted with that theme. Whereas again, Webflow, you've got free reign. Hope this is kind of making sense. I'm trying not to be as technical and I'm trying to be relevant to the sorts of questions that you have asked. So that's primarily the differences in resourcing with regards to, to Webflow versus uh, WordPress. Pricing wise, there is a quite a large difference because WordPress in and of itself is free. You normally are just paying for the hosting of that, which again is a fairly cheap um, thing to have. My hosting is probably something like four pounds a month or something. Where the, the costing is really going to take shape is more in the, the actual resources you need, so the designers and the developers. That's where you're going to, that's where you're going to spend a lot of money. Whereas on Webflow, you, you just need kind of um, a designer, but the price of Webflow, and I'll do a separate episode on the pricing structure because it's a little bit more complicated, but ultimately you're paying all in on Webflow. You, you pay, I think it's something like $238 a year for the access to the designer, the CMS, and, and all the rest of it. And that's just for the site itself. And then you need a, an account with them, which you pay for as well. So it does tend to add up, but you must bear in mind that you're getting a lot for that. You're getting everything taken care of, like security, updates. They're really keeping things ticking. Whereas on the WordPress side of things, you have to have someone maintain that project or keep it kind of going. A lot of people say they you come back to a WordPress website a year later and it's just, it doesn't work the same. I've not experienced that. I've, I've built themes that are still working to this day that haven't had any kind of run-ins with any updates or stuff like that. I think it really comes down to the quality of the developer and the team that you hire to build the WordPress website. So don't be too fearful of a lot of maintenance, a lot of upkeep, because there are, there are, if it's built right, then there should be no stress in that area at all. So that's the price of the platforms themselves. When it comes to the kind of project itself of developing a WordPress website versus a Webflow website, I think you are going to save a lot of money in the development of that product if you went with Webflow. Just because you're, limit, you're, you're reducing the amount of resources you can have, it's a lot it's a, it's a faster process to get your website up and running, so therefore it tends to be a lot cheaper. Now, these are obviously ballpark figures. I have no idea. You might have some very complex feature set 
um, that you're, you're working with with your website, but you can typically expect, I think, between five and 20,000 pounds for a Webflow website. And 20,000 pounds is a real stretch, really. I think you, you'd be, I'd be surprised if a website costs you 20,000 pounds. Whereas WordPress is, is, is kind of strange, actually, because of the competition that's out there. I think you can get a very simple, very basic WordPress website done for a couple of thousand pounds, particularly if you went with a theme that's been already been created and it it's basically just taking someone to just plug it all in together. And if that works for you, and if that is something you wanna go with, then you can get a WordPress website very cheaply. Whereas if you want to develop a very bespoke solution, I think you're really expecting to pay uh, 5,000 pounds upwards to like 50,000 pounds, which is why WordPress really needs to be a solution that you, you know that you need before investing in it because it will end up costing a lot more. So with that then, let's talk about the different use cases of these different platforms. As I said earlier, Webflow have identified what most websites typically are, and that is a basic marketing website with some dynamic content in it that is either single individual landing pages or like an agency website or, or a company website. They do have e-commerce capabilities, they do have uh, localization capabilities, and again, I go over that in my previous uh, episode, but it's really a streamlined tool to build that kind of subset of websites. It also benefits you if your business is forever changing and you're updating your, your branding is changing or you're really trying to f tweak your offering and figure out like, or you know, you're, you're trying to find your way as a business. Webflow is really, really well suited to, for fast adaptive changes to your website. On the other hand, WordPress, it's very much, again, you're limited to that theme. Once you've built the theme, it's then an ordeal to then reconfigure that theme. You then have to add code and redevelop that, that theme itself. It's not quite as fluid. However, if you are someone or if you are a business that is very sure of themselves and kind of know what their offering is, then then you can save a lot of time, a lot of money, and um, have confidence in the stability of your website if you went with something like WordPress. Another aspect is actually integrating with other systems that you might have, whether it's a invoicing tool or whether it's some bespoke platform or SaaS product that you've created. WordPress enables you to integrate with those things a lot more reassuringly, whereas Web Webflow, you are actually restricted by the integrations that they have. Now, this is a very powerful um, and wide ecosystem that they have, especially with things like Zapier and stuff. You can integrate with a lot, but there might be the opportunity or there might be the situation where they just don't have the integration with, a, with an external service. It's worth doing the due diligence to actually figure that out beforehand. Whereas with WordPress, you absolutely 100% know that you can integrate with, a, with another service, providing that other service allows you to integrate with it. If it's a black box, then neither of these two services can integrate with them. And if you're an e-commerce store, again, I think WordPress is definitely the way to go with their WooCommerce pl um, plugin, which, which makes your WordPress website into an e-commerce platform. The e-commerce solution that Web Webflow offers is just, it's not mature enough. It's good for simple kind of independent um, businesses who are offering a few products and, and really don't need a, a, a fully, mature solution. So whilst it does have e-commerce, WordPress and WooCommerce is definitely the way to go. If indeed you, you aren't considering something like Shopify, and that's a different subject altogether, I think. But as far as WordPress goes and e-commerce, definitely that is the more stronger solution and more, more mature as well. And both of, these, both of these products are very well suited to blogging, really. WordPress started out as a blogging platform, whereas a, a, you know it's very mature in that aspect. Uh, Word, Webflow can blog as well, so it's just worth taking into consideration the other, op, the other feature set that it does have and what best works for you on top of needing a blog. So I really hope this helps you take a look at the two different solutions and in, in the pros and the cons and how they're different. Like I said, I do have an episode specifically on Webflow that is a bit more of a deep dive, so do check that out. And once again, if you do have any other questions, I do wanna build this series out into a CEO's Guide FAQ series of Webflow as a product, then do let me know. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.